Hey guys, this is a video for the uh, VF BMS or the VESC engineers uh, BMS, which is our smart CAN Bluetooth enabled BMS developed in uh, partnership with uh, Benjamin Bedrain team. So um, first of all, if you have this BMS purchased anywhere between November 2024 to end of February 2025, then you need to follow the steps where you need to um, update the firmware. Uh, future revisions should have the latest firmware installed. Um, however, it's always good to uh, install whatever is the latest and greatest. There is no harm in doing so. So first of all, the pinout um, or the connections for the balance leads should be in the user guide on the website and you should be watching this video through the user guide on the website. So refer to the uh, balance connectors when you are connecting and if you have any questions, please reach out to us via email, just support at fungineers.us. Now, uh, once you first get the BMS, you need to update the firmware. And typically with VESC, you need to power it up before you can connect it via USB to your computer. But not in this case, because this is run off an ESP32. So you can take a USB-C cable and directly connect it to your computer and directly power the ESP. And you he heard that uh, ding. So that means it's, it's alive um, and it's working. And you can update the firmware without connecting the balance leads and the battery and whatnot. So you can just do this. Um, and then what you need is the most important step, I guess, here is to get the correct VESC tool. So currently at the time of making this video, we're um, running the VESC tool 6.05. So if you download the normal VESC tool and you go to, he go to help and go to uh, about, you'll see this is 6.05, which is the current stable version of VESC tool. Um, the changes or the latest updates are made by Benjamin on the Vestool beta versions, which is the non-stable versions. So the point is, do not make these uh, updates using the 6.05 firm um, release of the Vestool, but rather go to vestproject.com, uh, um, log in if you have an account, make an account if you don't, and go to Vestool, and then download the Vestool. Add it to your cart, and then uh, check out then it's gonna ask you for your address and whatnot. And then you can enter that, review your order, and then submit your order. Once you do that, um, VESC will send an email to your inbox right here, and it'll tell, send you some files. So go to files and go to the last one, which says beta all. So download the latest zip file which contains all the latest beta tools now this is going to take a while to download there's going to be a couple of versions it's going to be windows there's going to be mac there's going to be best tool mobile so what you're going to open is windows or mac or linux or whatever operating system you're running here it is i'm just going to extract it and i'm just going to open the windows beta VESC tool again do not uh, do the firmware update using the normal stable VEST tool version. You've got to get the beta version. And the beta version is light blue. You can see right here. Uh, so that's one uh, differentiator. So I'm going to go to help. About VESC tool. And it's going to show me 6.06 uh, test version, which is good. And as soon as I start, I can see the serial ESP here, which is good, which means our BMS is connected. Right, so if I disconnect it, you'll see that disappear. Uh, if this is not happening for you, then something is uh, up with the with your BMS. It might need flashing in some other ways, but this should happen, uh, and all the BMS should show up. And I'm going to hit connect now. I need to update the latest this to the latest firmware and the latest VESC package. So with this BMS, what Benjamin started doing is uh, having VESC packages so that updates are more frequent and more easy 
to implement. So I'm going to go to Vest Packages, and the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to Update Archive right here, right? And that's going to make sure that we get the latest applications here. So Update Archive, and it's going to download the latest applications. Okay, once it's downloaded, you can go to the VBMS Micro and install it, and done. Okay, so now we have installed the VEST package. That was step one. Step two is to update the firmware. So we're gonna go to the firmware tab and it should already have an, the included firmware. And what I'm gonna do is click the down arrow here, click the down arrow here, which says install and say yes. And it's gonna erase everything on the BMS and install a new firmware. And this should take about a minute. All right, um, after the firmware update is done, it's gonna say that it's gonna reboot the BMS in 10 seconds. And you can just click OK. And then if you go to Welcome and Wizards, you should see the BMS rebooted. If it's not, you can unplug the USB, plug it back again, and it should be rebooted. Okay, now it's updated. I'm gonna go to firmware and see it's it's got the 6.06 .06 .06 micro firmware. That's the correct one as of this version. Your version should might be 6.07, should be 6.06 .06 v1, whatever. But whatever is on the latest VEST tool beta should always be the latest. Uh, so that's done now. So you've got the latest package, you've got the latest firmware. Now, we need to configure our BMS. Now, that depends on how many cells you're using, obviously. You could use this BMS from anywhere from, I don't know, five cells all the way to the to 32 cells but we recommend minimum of 18 cells up to 32 cells um, so we, we need to configure what our BMS is going to do go to VESC BMS tab right here and the first one is CAN we're not going to touch anything on this tab second one is Wi-Fi it says Wi-Fi is disabled that's fine third one is Bluetooth which says disabled, we need to enable that because we need to see or connect to the BMS via Bluetooth sometimes. Once your board is assembled, you'll mainly just be connecting it via CAN, but sometimes if you need to make changes, update firmware, you can connect directly to the BMS through Bluetooth. So enable the Bluetooth, um, and that's all we need to do on this tab. You can rename your BMS if you want to, but I'll leave it as default as VEST BMS. In the general, this is the most important um, category. Um, actually, before we go to general, we need to go to sleep and we need to ensure that the block sleep mode is true. That means we will not let the BMS sleep when it reboots until we apply all the settings. Okay, I'm gonna click right, uh, which is here at the bottom. So click right, I'm gonna go back to general and I'm gonna set my IC1 and IC2. Now IC1 takes care of the lowest 16 cells. So if you're running, let's say an 18S, you'll put 16 in IC1 and you'll put two in IC2. And that will be your 18S BMS. If you're running 20, um, you'll do 16 in IC1 and four in IC2. Likewise, uh, if you're running a 32S, you're gonna do 16 and 16. Me right here, I'm running uh, a 20S, so I'm gonna do 16 and four. I'm gonna leave everything else to default. And, um, oh, actually, I have two temperature sensors, so I'm gonna change my temperature sensors to two. If you're using all four, you can use four, you can, or you can make zero, whatever, but two is recommended. I'm gonna click right again, move on to charging. Um, I usually leave the charging to default. In balancing, it says the mode is balanced during and after charging, which is the correct and recommended one. And all the charging limits here can be changed at your own risk, but we do recommend to leave it as it is. Now sleep mode was true, and that's fine. I'm gonna hit right once more here. Then I'm gonna go up here to terminal and I'm just gonna reboot my BMS. So it's gonna disconnect 
and reconnect and then I'll connect to it again and just check if all the settings are applied Bluetooth is enabled my ICs are correct now and sleep mode is blocked all the settings are done it's time to connect my BMS so um, I'm gonna disconnect it from USB at this point I highly recommend you wear um, gloves to um, prevent any potential damage to the BMS via static but um, I'm gonna hold it at the point where nothing is touching so let's move on to the connection order of the BMS so if you're once you're wearing your nitride gloves first thing you want to do and this is uh, completely different from the norm we're gonna connect the main balance lead coming from your battery not the charger but the actually actual battery so we're gonna make sure the polarity is correct and I'm gonna connect the positive and negative to the battery okay now high voltage is connected to the BMS and the next step we're gonna do is connect the balance leads from the lowest cell to the highest cell so I'm gonna connect the first one here And then while I'm connecting, you should hear a beep. Uh, sometimes you don't hear a beep, but that's okay. Once you reboot, it should take care of itself. So let's see if we get the beep. There you go. Um, so as soon as IC1 and 2 are connected, you get that beep. But if you don't, that's fine. You don't uh, need to panic. Uh, we can reboot from the system and get it started. Um, so that's all the connections done. What I did was the lowest 10 cells higher eight cells that's 18s and then two cells coming from the split pack up front that's 20s and of course if you're connecting 32s you can connect all of them if you're connecting anywhere between 18s 24s 30s um, you need to skip a few balance leads and short them and all that is should be listed in the user guide and if you have any questions you can reach out to us but yeah 20S is straightforward, you don't have to skip anything just all the way. Uh, 32S is also straightforward, disconnect everything all the way. But everything in between, uh, not quite straightforward. Okay, I've got my BMS connected now. So first thing I'm gonna check is with the USB. So I'm gonna connect it back, making sure it doesn't touch any high voltage. And go back to my computer. And I'm gonna connect it right here. And then I'm going to go to BMS data and I'm not going to see any data because the BMS is disabled right here on the right side. So enable BMS and there you go. You can see all 20 cells. You can see the voltage um, and currently no temperature sensors are connected. So you can just see the two onboard sensors, which is the IC temperature and the MOSFET temperature. Um, and they are 33 and 28 Celsius, so that's good. I'm gonna take one uh, external temperature sensor that you should receive with the BMS, and I'm gonna connect it in one of the ports. And then as soon as I connect it, you can see T2 pop up. And uh, if I leave it room temperature, you can see that's around 29C. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hold uh, I'm going to hold the temperature sensor in my uh, and press it and then that should increase the temperature you can see it increasing and going all the way up to almost 33 Celsius let's go back to the BMS so we need to do a little bit of cable management here uh, typically this temperature sensor is part of the battery pack I'm going to remove the um, USB and uh, now I'm gonna go to VESC tool and see if I can connect to it via Bluetooth all right so we open the VESC tool make sure your Bluetooth and location is enabled so you can see the VESC BMS and basically just connect to it it's gonna give you a warning if you're on the previous firmware but that's fine you can still see all your cell voltages even if you're on a previous firmware so I can see all of my 20 cells they are almost within balance once I connect the charger um, to during and after charging it should start balancing the cells and should see it doing the same and if I scroll up you can see the blue bars where the temperature sensors and here you can also 
click on the three dots in the bottom right, which I just did, and then enable balancing. And now you can see it's bleeding the orange cells and putting charge into the cells that have a lower voltage. Yeah, that's it. Um, that's the BMS working properly. You can access it via Bluetooth. You can access it via CAN from your Thor 300. So yeah, thank you for supporting Fungineers and VESC. Keep Fungineering and see you next time.